All right, guys, we are in the shop with our bottle of Oat Gall ink. Now, we went through a lot of effort to make this, but you're going to see it's worth it. So what do you do with something that's a stain that makes things almost as black as my really cool Paul Miro Junk Pile Guitars t-shirts? Well, let me tell you. You know I make license plate guitars. You know Gallia Volt has a few of these. One of them's in Europe right now. The other one's on the front uh, cover of her new album, One Woman Band. And then she's got a couple scattered across the United States. I think Deke Rivers has one of these. You know Deke Rivers. He's the one that uh, supplied me. The Mississippi Clay. No, that was Cody Harrell. Uh, Deke Rivers is the one that gave me the Mississippi River water for the episode of uh, putting a really crazy stain on a kit guitar right up there right about now. Anyway, so you're familiar with these. Well, I got an oddball one. I'm going to take a couple of boards I had laying around making neck and, and uh, one of these John Sawyer kit bodies for a license plate guitar. And this burned up, look at this, burned up, torched Mississippi license plate. And we're going to make a really cool guitar. And part of that guitar is going to be, we are going to stain the neck with Oak Gall ink. So let's do a little work, get another board glued on here, get it routed out where it will fit the right pickup. It's going to have one of these hot pickups on it, yeah. So that's got to be in the right place for the fingerboard and everything to line up. So let's get this neck done, routed out, and sanded down, and then we'll put some stain on it. And I'll catch up with you after that. All right, real quick here, this is going to be a 25 and a half scale. We have the neck on top of the box, we still, or the frame, we have to do the cutouts. I've got this fancy Beverly Hills California ruler. I'm going to make a mark up at where the end of the fretboard is. I've made a mark here. I'm going to go around all sides and make sure everybody knows where that is. Then I'm going to lay this plate on here making sure it's facing the right way and figure out do I want to move the neck up or down or where do I want that bridge to end up and so I have to think about where my license plate mounts are where my volume control is going to be and I think that right about there is a good spot okay so I'm going to have to cut this off this corner for my volume control I'm going to need to know once I start notching these to get the level of everything right I have to have the top of the neck this part here before the fingerboard goes on match the level of this so I need to have my orientation at all times that's why I've got this the back of the guitar and the top of the guitar back and top people that's why you want to go to college trust me Okay, when you're cutting pockets, I want to show you a handy tool. You've got your flush cut saw, you've got your chisel, and then there's this puppy, which allows you to go back and forth. Of course, you've got to pay attention to which way the belt spins. 
to work the corners. Watch this. Okay, things are notched out now. Let's drop the neck in here again. I can't emphasize enough that this line right here and this line right here are lined up. That's where your bridge is going to go. And that mark is there for that. Notice that we left this rise up so when we were routing this down, we wouldn't be tilting and playing the teeter-totter game. But the trick now is, this is a pretty beefy pickup. Okay, and so what I need to do is I need to set that on there and make sure that I drop half my tools on the floor so I can waste your time and mine picking them up. You hear that old man? Oof. Anyway, before I put the fingerboard on here, you see that pickup is just almost touching the straight edge. Can't forget we're going to put the license plate on there so that's going to bring up the thickness like so now we've got a gap a little gap the fingerboard will take care of that but what I need to do now is to get this level with this so the license plate sits over and doesn't rock back and forth so I'm going to take one of these I'm going to measure how far this needs to come down and then I'm going to notch the neck right there rather than cutting this down anymore. We're already getting a little thin there. So I'm going to notch the neck down. Again, I'm going to line everything up. I need to have all that lined up. It never hurts to do that with a straight edge, a square. Make sure everything is lined up. There we go. Now I can just take a pencil, a fancy me for school board election pencil, and make a mark there, 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 and there. And I will mark off on the notch this part on the bottom, and everything will sit right down. The last thing we need to do is figure out how much of the tailpiece we want to do to put our string retainers and then our all of our grounding scrap apparatus. But that's kind of the one, two, three of it all. All right, there we go. What I did was I took uh, and cut these lines on a band saw. If you can't, you can always use your flush cut saw. Uh, and then I just took this to the router, set the router up, and marked it to line, and everything's good. Now, I'm going to drop these in here like so, make sure there's not a bunch of slop. Remember, your neck uh, has a scarf joint, so it's angled. So if you see something high, make sure it's not your uh, headstock dropping down on your bench. But now is a good time to take a straight edge and make sure that this is certainly not above it. Um, and, and the same thing over here. Mark everything like that. Make sure it's okay because now the plate sits on here. And the pickup sits on the plate. Of course, we're going to make sure that we put something between the metal of the plate and the metal of the pickup so the whole top of the guitar is not a pickup unless you want it that way. But, yeah, there we go. That'll be about it right there. In the event you need to take something off, you've always got your trusty this gadget. But use care when marking this stuff up. Don't get sloppy uh, because you really shouldn't have to take a whole lot off Believe it or not, a file has worked for a hundred years or more, maybe even a million. I don't know. I wasn't there. Maybe you were, but if you need to get something in here, then just a little bit here and there will work. Notice we cut down through our stabilization pins there. You see that? Okay, now I'm just going to figure out how much of a tail piece I want. Of course, this will all be covered up. I'll make a mark here where the box ends and then I'm going to want a couple inches here and I'll drill my holes for my tension pins and run everything up through there. Of course I need a little bit of a drop down here for the copper shielding tape that I'm going to run from the pins that the strings run up through and then my grounding 
wire will be attached to the side of the neck so I can hook it up to my volume control and pick up and all that kind of thing. I've got a video about grounding the strings. It's up there, right there, right about now. It's a cigar box. works for everything, including these license plate guitars. Okay, guys, now it's time to really start imagining things. Um, and if you need something to help you do that, that's not on me. That's not... That's on you. I cannot absolve you of your sins. But this plate has been on fire. You can see this charred. We're going to make the neck of the guitar look charred like that. See the resemblance? Alrighty then. In order to make this all work to tie this together, we need to make this box look like it's on fire. Let's do that now. Okay, check it out. Bam, let's catch up here. What am I doing? Well, I've got this Mississippi license plate that's been on fire and it looks like it's charred like this wood. Now, what I need to do is I need to put it in this body that looks like it's been on fire. And for it to all fit together, I had to sand this down so nothing sticks to it that's going to mess up the charred perfectly charred look burned finish that we're going to do with our oak gall ink now i started off with 60 grit and finished up with 400 grit every part of this neck that is going to be visible has been sanded down again there's nothing on it no finger oil, any of that kind of thing. I mean, I dip my hands in some kind of secret something or other to make them look all glamorous for this job. See that? Anyway, I'm going to apply the oak gall ink on here, and it's going to be a little bit light at first, but watch what happens. And the whole idea is the Mississippi fireball is going to come together. Okay, here we go. Got a clean rag in hand. It's a wipe all rag. It's made out of paper, but it's dustless. And here comes the moment of truth.
All right, here we go. I took some oak gall ink and put it on some tulip poplar. And this is what the tulip poplar looked like before. Now look, let's look at the after. The whole idea was to make this neck look scorched like it had been on fire. So it would fit into this body that looks like it's on fire right now. And it holds this Mississippi license plate that has actually been on fire. So now all I got to do is cut up some of this faded Marvel Mystery Oil can, put some of it in the right spots, put a fretboard on this thing and some good tuners, and then we're going to rig up this hot rod pickup, and this thing will scream, meet the Mississippi Fireball. What we're up to now is it's time to go to work on the headstock. We are going to use this template here to punch center holes and then we'll drill a pilot hole. We're going to do come in from both sides once we drill the pilot hole through is not how to booger out the threads there. Once this is all drilled out, we're going to flip it over and have Tammy sign it. I don't like drilling through her signature, you can understand that. Anyway, let's um, pull this apart here. You're going to see this as it happens, but I'm going to clamp the rosewood fretboard on here, leaving room for the nut right there. We're going to have to cut the nut down to size once it's there. Of course, curve part to the back, like so, like that. And then we flip this over, and you can see that this fretboard is wider than the neck. So we're going to take the marker and try to line this up and center it up. You want to make sure you're centered up for sure, because if you're not, your frets will be kicked off to one side or another. But we take a black magic marker or a Sharpie and come down like so on each side and then we're going to take this to the belt sander and cut it down we will then glue it on uh, and then we will dress up the sides now uh, the fret markers there's not going to be matchbooks on this i'm going to use these red fret markers uh, because they'll match what's going on here of course we're going to put a piece of this can ultimately on top of the headstock up here and of course everything will be dressed out with chick flick teal screw so i'll give you bits and pieces of me doing these steps now and i will catch back up with you in a bit Okay, I want to tell you, I've gone through a couple different bits to get to this point. A small one, a little bit bigger one. Now I've got this huge one. This is one I want to end up with. So what I'm going to do is set my clutch really low. I, you're going to see me run this backwards a little bit to get it grooved in. I don't want tear out on this stuff because I'm running with the grain. I'm drilling kind of with the grain so that's how this tear out happens so you're going to see me rotate it on each one you're going to see me go in a little bit and then flip it over and come in the rest of the way i don't want to bust through on either side with this big huge bit so watch this
Okay, now the tricky part. We're going to put a back of a Marvel Mystery Oil can on this headstock. And we need to cut holes in metal for the tuners. And we need to screw it down so we're going to come in off the corner with the awl. And do some of that. Like so. Line it up. Take a small bit, got a flap around it, we don't want to go through everything. Like so. And then we're going to drill those out and put some chick flick teal screws on. Then we'll punch through the back, find out where the holes are, and put these nice Grover tuners on this headstock. All right, we got the headstock down, the tuners on. It's going to be time to fret this thing pretty soon. But what we want to do first is we want to put fret markers on the fretboard. We are not going to put matchbooks on this one. We are going to put fret markers on the top side here. Look at that color. Isn't that awesome? But fret markers up here and on the fingerboard. So I want to show you that I'm going to put these on the third, the fifth, the seventh, and the twelfth fret, and to go along with the theme of fire, we've got these small red fret markers. Now, little trick here, we know that the fret marker goes halfway between the fret you're marking and the one above it, so we are going to put a piece of tape there and then what we are going to do is we are going to mark from the edge of the fret up here to the edge of the fret right there like so and we're going to take our love pencil and we're going to make a mark right there and then we're going to turn it the other way like so and we're going to put a mark like that. You see that? That is where our fret marker is going to need to be. So I'm going to take an awl. I'm going to put a little dot right there like that. Doesn't need too much. And then I'm going to use a quarter inch Forstner bit. And it's got a little nub on it right there. And then I'm going to drill down, see how that drops in right there? I'm going to drill down about halfway, and then we will put some glue on here and tap this in. We'll do one here, 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 and then we'll double up on the 12. So I'll do the same thing. I'll do a crossing line, and then I'll measure equidistant off the side of the center mark using... A straight line to figure out how to put two down here. Now we're going to drop the Forstner bit in. We're going to go about halfway down. Pop the tape off. Put a little glue on under there after we fit the first one. All right, look at that. Easy money. Okay, we've got the red fret markers on the front of the fretboard. Now we're going to turn it on its side. I put a piece of tape running through the center of the red fret markers, which means the center is right along that edge, and I've marked the same frets here. So now all I have to do is take my awl. Now you want to be careful doing this because 
if you hit it too hard, you'll split the fretboard in half. You want to come about halfway down the fretboard and just tap a little hole there. Take your time doing this. Again, you want to don't, don't do it too hard now. What I want to do is over here where the 12th fret is, I'm going to put two in. So I'm going to put one at the bottom edge to line up with the bottom edge of the fret marker and one with the top edge of the red fret marker. So these two are about a fret marker with side. Now I'm going to drill them out and I'm going to put white fret marker material here to stand out like a sore thumb. We will duco cement them in and then we'll sand them off. Okay, we've got the red fret markers in at the top. We've run tape to the center of each one. We've marked off halfway down the side of the fretboard, drilled a small hole, marking the depth of it with this flapper tape, made the holes here. Going to put in a little bit of Duco cement into each hole like so and then we're going to go along and put our white fret marker material down. Snap that off close like this. We'll come along and sand it and there's going to be two on the 12th fret. Easy money. All right, when you go to sand these off or file them down, you always want to make sure you got a piece of tape on both sides here so you're not scuffing everything up because when you start hitting the tape, you know if you come at an angle like this, you know that the fret marker is down to the level of the tape. And that means it's flush enough so it won't hang up on the side of the neck. Okay, the next step is we're gonna fret this thing. Always buy good fret wire and buy it in bulk because you're not gonna save any money going the other route. Uh, thank you for your expert tutelage on that. Darren Dukes as well as, hey, get a good set of fret pliers, please. Um, because you're not going to, and don't use these for anything but uh, cut and fret wire. So anyway, we're going to cut the end of this off at an angle because that's what we want. When we get over here to file, you'll find out it'll be much easier. Now I just find the slot here like, the, like so. Now I have a fret press, so I'm going to use that, but I'll just tap these in like so. Then I'll come along, and these are where these pliers come in really handy. You just come up right to the edge and snip that off. I'm just tap it in there a little bit and we'll get to the fret press and we just march down the board. Now notice the way that's cut. It's cut at a little bit of an angle and so just find the tang, drag it in there like that and just repeat this over and over. Once they're all in, I will take them to the fret press. All right, we have what's called an arbor press. I scabbed this together out of something from Harbor Freight and got the right tool here. It's called a call and it has a, fr a flat uh, piece here that rides the top of the fret. These also come radius if you get into other guitars, but I've got that tapped in there and this just got a groove in it and you just pull down on this and it sets the fret in place and applies equal pressure and if this thing doesn't make it easy money I don't know what it what does, all it takes is the awesome strength of my incredible bulk, I mean Hulk.
Yeah. You get the idea. So we tap them in first with a hammer. And bingo. All right, guys. Here we go. Let's catch up a little bit. We are going to need to put this license plate on here where it will fit and it will stay and it will be down as low as possible. So I've gone around and taken, that's right, the love pencil and drawn out where those ovals are. And we're going to tap with the all a place where we can start to drill those out make sure they don't move while we're doing the other ones there we go now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these are t-nuts um, and we're gonna use these to hold the license plate down in to the frame now the deal is, is if we don't countersink these or put these down in, they're going to stick up that much. We don't want that. We want to take a Forstner bit and find where we just pop that hole in with the awl. And we're just going to go around and put four of these down. And then that way, the Forstner or the T-nuts will sink down and be flush, and then when we put the plate on, everything will be not up off the deck anymore than it needs to. Okay, now we're going to want to drill out the center of these holes. Notice that we didn't drill the big hole first, because then the Forstner bit would have been a nightmare, but we're going to dig out, drill out the center of these holes so this part of the T-nut can drop down in there. All right, there we go, last one. And so now the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this small bit and we're gonna drill three holes in each one of these T-nuts and of course we're gonna use our Chick Flick Teal screws. All right, there we go, everything's flush. Our plate goes on top, like so, and then these just drop right in, just like that. Of course, we're going to touch these up and make them look like they're brand new worms first day. We don't want that. All right, now we're going to go to work on the tail piece. This is where the strings will come up. This is where we're going to ground everything. We're going to put in wrist pins. And I've got this little template here that's got my string spacing for a four string. And I don't want to put all four strings right next to each other. I want to break them up because that gives us a little bit of load as centered somewhere besides on one plane. We want to do that as much as possible. So I've got two back here, and then I bring this up here and do the center too, or vice versa. Now I'm going to drill pilot holes, go all the way through, and then I'll drill bigger holes and put wrist pins in. Then I'll cover this in foil, copper tape, excuse me, to ground everything, strings, touch wrist pins, touch copper tape, touch grounding over here. So... Let me get that done, I'll catch up with you. Okay, these are wrist pins, they have a groove in them. If you put them in this way, the strings will come out or get cut, so you always put the grooves towards the back, like so. Now, we are going to put copper tape over the top and bring it up to here. And then we will push that down through the pins, cover it up, put a piece of metal on here to match the motif. And then we'll be able to come over here and ground everything to a piece of metal. 
like this one says roofing or other, something like that over here. Okay, those are the holes coming from the bottom and they're right there. Now all we got to do is take our awl and our punch and widen these out a little bit and work them around. That way the strings don't hang up or get cut. Okay, now we're going to take a piece of copper tape about this long. We're going to put it up here about right here, like so. Start off the edge. I'm going to press down. Go all the way around. Like so. Push it down. Now, we're going to take about right there and drill a starter hole for a chick flick teal through. like so we have taken our snips and cut out a piece of metal that looks about mysteriously like this we are going to screw this down into here like so we're going to do that without cutting ourselves on the metal. So we'll run this in first like this. And then we'll back the whole thing out like that. Now we will take a piece of pushback wire, shielded wire. They call it pushback wire because you can just push this back. And we're going to make a loop, and we're going to go around our piece of metal here, like so. We're going to hold the whole thing down after we've gone around a couple times. And we are going to be really careful when we wind this around here, because this thing's going to spin on us. And we are going to run this down until we trap that wire. Now, because this end part, we can do fancy stuff and hold that wire like so. And then push it back into place like so. Now, this will become our grounding wire. Again, wrist pins, strings go through metal pins, Metal pins come up through metal top. Metal top is attached to this. Grounding wire is here. Easy money. All right, now we're going to attach the body to the neck. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this template I have, which is for a three-string cigar box guitar, but it's pretty handy for finding the center here and up here. All I got to do is line it up with the, see it's as wide as the neck board. But I've got a mark there and there. So now all I have to do is drill a hole right here and right here that will hold these deck screws. Hey, deck screw hater, haven't talked to you in a while. And then once I drill the holes that are just big enough to hold these snug, then I'm going to countersink them where they sit flush with this because they have a tapered head. Watch me now.
All right, let's get to the electronics now. You always want to make sure that when you're working on the bottom side of this, that you know which way is up and which way is down. Now, this is the top towards the player. This is the bottom. And that means that we want to put the volume control right there in that little spot there. And it will fit there like this. You want to make sure you know where you're going to put it because there's not much room there. And then we're going to put the jack has a strap button on it. That way we kill two birds with one stone. So we're going to drill a hole there and we're going to drill a hole here. We're going to wire the jack up to everything and ground everything. The pickup wire is going to come through here. We're going to show you a little trick with a grommet so that doesn't ground itself out with a piece of wood. Now, when you are drilling, especially through metal, always get a pilot hole where you want, like there, and then, especially through metal, one of these graduated bits works out really well. Okay, I want to talk to you a little bit about this pickup. Um, I did an episode about how to wire a coil pickup. I'll give you a link to it right up there, right about now. Wiring is pretty simple. This one's not going to have a tone control, it's just straight volume control. But when you put magnetic pickup on something metal, if you don't shield it, it is going to turn the whole plate into a pickup. So you would hear tapping on it. You might like that, you might not. So, if you don't like that, what you need to do is shield this with something and you might try something like a piece of this veneer. So I just trace this out on here, drill the holes where it needs to be, and put that down before I bolt everything down. Now, something else I want to talk to you about is run this wire through here. Sooner or later, the wire is going to rub through, everything will be shorted out, and you'll forget about how it was. So you take one of these grommets like you used to drill a hole in the firewall of your 67 Chrysler Newport or Imperial that you bought for $350, and you pop this in the hole like so. There's a groove there, it will ride the metal, and then you put the wire through the rubber grommet and you don't have to worry I'm usually better at this you don't have to worry about metal rubbing through but that's what we're going to do we're going to cut a piece of this veneer it's 16 inch veneer I can stack it and put that underneath there drill the holes where it needs to be and it will shield the plate All right, before we flip this over to do the wiring, uh, I have put the bridge on here, and we've spent a lot of time the pickup hooked up, uh, making sure everything is at the right level, and now we got our fancy Beverly Hills yardstick that's been cut off, and it tells us where the 25 and a half mark is, because that's the scale. Halfway is the 12th fret, and then that's to there. And so this is kind of sitting here precariously. So what I've done is I've drilled a little hole through the foot of the bridge like this. 
and down through the plate and now we've got one of these pickup ring mounting screws and it's going to drop down in there and we'll run it down through the plate and this will remain stable and nothing will move. I'll leave the light out for you. All right, guys, getting down into details. It's time to put the nut on. Now, if the nut is up too high, what happens is it becomes very difficult to fret right here. If it's too low, uh, it'll buzz everywhere. So, little trick I learned from my friend Rob at Guitar 48. You take this pick here, and you take a pencil and you flatten it out where it's half and the lead is right there. And you flip the nut. See, the nut is shaped where this part goes towards the tuner, so it rounds off. But you put the nut here. This one's way too high, so I just flip it upside down and I put this flat part of the pencil on top of the pick and I just slide it back and forth like that and that right there I can cut off and the neck the nut will be kind of fine-tuned once I flipped it over thanks Rob alright we are getting really close now we got some details you gotta make sure that these don't look like worms first day so we're gonna to touch those up um, everything is adjusted the action is good we got a knob to put on here um, we're going to finally tighten up the tuners all the way. We are going to put a coin in here so we can feel when our finger hits the 12th fret for the slide. And we are going to seal up the back and then we'll have a final look.
Alright guys, we are done with the Mississippi Fireball. I'm going to remember this came to me a few months ago. With um, It started off as a Mississippi dealer plate that had been through a fire. And it took me a while to figure out what am I going to do with this. Uh, and so as soon as I started making that Oak Gall ink... I think I gave you a link to the episode up there that would make it look like charred wood. As soon as that happened, and as soon as I ran across my Marvel Mystery Oil can, everything started to pop too. Now, this thing has, of course, Tammy's signature, a set of Gibson tuners, a Marvel Mystery Oil can. Um, look at those red fret markers. I didn't cover this up with... Uh, matchbooks or anything. Oh, it's got a Mississippi Tax Commission coin up there. It's also got a 1927 Buffalo nickel in the back, year of the Great Mississippi Flood. What else? We've got a nice pickup here, a floating bridge that's pinned down. Um, everything is grounded. Oh, we got our Eli Green Hoodoo Voodoo bead. Uh, we got our Paul... Miro Junk Pow Guitar Stickers and our Acton Women's Club. Acton Women's Club, cultural capital of the world. I bought some stuff there that helped me make the Oak Gall ink for grinding up Oak Galls. But anyway, so yeah, in this fiery looking finish here. Yeah, I don't know what to think about that. I do think it looks pretty good. Anyway, so here's what's going to happen. I've got one more of these license plate guitars to make, and this one, and the one I'm about to make, that I've been making the same time I've been making this one, because I'm just that efficient. Anyway, we're going to package all those up and ship them off to North Mississippi, along with the Mississippi Mudslide. Remember this one? Kit guitar. I think I've got enough cards left to give you a link to the playlist on this one. Start to finish Guitar Kit World ES-175 kit that is stained with Mississippi mud. And Anyway, this thing is unique. How do you get a unique guitar? That's right, unique up on it. Anyway, I got some work to do. Thanks for watching. Give me a like and a subscribe if you haven't, and I will... See you soon. Yeah, they're tough. Don't worry about it. See you soon.